welcome back to Enjoy the Book of Life. We're here with another resource review and our first digital tool. We're going to be looking at Blue Letter Bible. Now, Christian, you use this quite a bit. Can you tell us a little bit about what it is? Yeah, thanks, David. Um, Blue Letter Bible is um, a, a platform that um, provides powerful tools uh, for Bible study um, uh, students in order to study in depth God's word. Um, and this platform is an online platform. Uh, it is available both on the uh, PC platform or if you use a Mac, or in the, it's also available on a mobile, dev mobile devices. Okay, so I've got a little example here for us to look at. Okay, so this is the web page. This is what we're looking at when we pop on, and it's just blueletterbible.org. And we've got all these up at the top. Now, out of these, Christian, which do you explore? Mm -hmm. I you, you normally use Blue Letter Bible on my mobile device, so I'm, so I'm not very familiar with um, uh, the computer, uh, the desktop, um, the desktop uh, platform. However, uh, what mostly what I use the the application mostly for is for uh, word etymology understanding the origin of words for instance i would go i would probably type in a verse uh, let's say you go you have the example right there under uh, search the bible you see you have john 3 16 okay let's see if it pulls it up so once it pulls it up you have the option to let's say click on that verse Okay, let's see, nothing happens there. Then if you go on tools on the left, interlinear, so it will give you um, just hover on, hover, hover, yes, okay, let's see there. You have interlinear. So interlinear, it will give you word by word. So each word. And we have also the, I guess that number is, uh, if you click on the number right there at the center, yes. Yep. yep. Yeah. So that will immediately take you to the, um, it will give you the definition of the of the word. So go ahead and click on it. Okay. I chose God. So it will give you the word. Yeah. So the word etymology, it will give you the how to pronounce it. And this time, notice that it's giving it to you in Greek. Mm -hmm. If this passage or verse was in the Old Testament, it would give it to you in Hebrew. So it's giving you where it the the, the origin the origin of the word. It's giving you the uh, the significance, the how to pronounce it. Uh, we see how the if it's masculine or feminine noun. And it's also giving you the usage of the path of the word in different where it's used throughout the Bible. And one of the things I like with this is when you get to the dictionary aid with vines and I can click the view entry and it has for me the definition that just pops up right there. It is a massive tool. It's a, it's a, it's like an encyclopedia. And it's uh, uh, available for, for free, which is also astounding. And if you really want to delve into the word of God and found, find uh, treasures, this is one way to go. So I referenced these up at the top, and we are just using the search tool, which is right at the beginning. You can search a verse, a word, or a topic. You can choose from lots of different translations. And this is really as far as I get into it as well. So the what, what you've been describing, 
That's basically what I use Blue Letter Bible for as well. There are study tools, devotionals, helps, products, ministries about all of those. And there's a lot more to the site. But when it comes to Bible study, this is such a helpful tool with your own, um, you know, digging into the word. And like you said, with the etymology. So I want I pulled up an example here. And this is, let's say I was looking at the idea of redemption. Now, what you did is you took us to a passage, and then we started looking at all the words individually. So if I'm reading through the Bible, I can say, oh, that's interesting, and click over at tools and find that out. But if you do it the other way, if let's say you're looking at an idea, a topic, then you can do this. So I searched redemption. And it gives me primary. And what primary means is it's just all the uses of that word throughout the whole Bible. Then I can click on dictionaries. And this will pop up all different definitions for redemption. Okay. And included in that is vines, redeem, or redemption. Now, Vine's expository dictionary that they have is of New Testament words, so that will only apply for the New Testament. Um, then you have the lexicon, which actually looks at these different words in Hebrew and then in Greek, and then frequently asked questions over there. But if I'm at the primary, I can go through and I can select this one. So like, for example, if I click Ruth 4, 6, and I wanted to look specifically just at this verse. And this is where you brought us to, right? With the John three sixteen. So I'm looking right. at uh, Ruth 4, and I want to look at this idea of redemption. We see the word redeem here, and we've got this number uh, H. And again, if we look over at this Greek word, the strong starts with a G for Greek, and then the number. Whereas here, all these words will start with an H for Hebrew. And so that's another, another little help there. So if I'm looking at this idea of redeem, H1350, uh, I can click on that word. And once again, I'll get the um, transliteration, pronunciation, part of speech. Now, this is one of the cool things that I like here that here it says the KJV translates this word, H1350, which sometimes the number is easier to say than the uh, pronunciation of the Hebrew or the Greek. Mm -hmm. But uh, they'll say this, this word can be translated in these ways. 50 times it's translated redeem, 18 redeemer, 13 kinsmen, which is interesting. And then revenger and avenger, right? And so it's like, wait, whoa, this is interesting. And uh, all the way down here, we have the word stain and the word wise. And so this, these are really cool to notice because then you can go to those uses, right? So where is it used as avenger? Where is it used as wise? And how does this idea of redemption fit with it why are these two so close that the translators would translate this one redeem this one kinsman this one avenger this one wise and so it kind of stokes the fire gets those questions going exactly and you know as bible students it is very important that we do not take scripture out of context we have to remember that when these writings were written uh, first, they were written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And there is a reason why each word was placed sp specifically and carefully where it is, where we find it. And we have to understand how and why it was used. So I am so happy that there is a tool like this that just details it carefully and uh, with uh, uh, very uh, precisely 
how you know where each word is used and how it's used and why it is used that way so and as bible students if we meet uh, we, we are studying and as you know reading we encounter those words and wonder okay why are these words why is this verb placed here why is this verb used in this sense it is important that we stop or we make a note to go back to that and then inquire and figure out why it is written that in that manner so that way we keep and we, we keep that significance of that passage instead of uh, uh, taking it out of out of context so it's very important that we really carefully examine words yeah 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 the men who originally created these tools like strong and vines like they believe that everyone should be a bible student and that's why they made these resources It's not just for people who speak greek and hebrew but understanding the the background of these words like again i would never have thought that this word avenger and this word redeemer were really the same word and so to make those of that that knowledge uh with the hebrew and the greek available to me these brothers created these resources and then of course now it's all digital uh which keeps us from having to carry the uh 50 pound books around with us wherever we go uh it can fit in our pocket or on our computer screen and so mm -hmm. uh, back to this we we saw that this idea of redeem and kinsman is sometimes both h1350 and if you look in this verse it says and the kinsmen and that's the same word right the kinsmen said that i cannot redeem the word redeem here and the word kinsman is the same hebrew word the h1350 and so noticing those little things allows you um, uh, a little bit more into that so let's look at this one here this is the idea of revenger so if i were to go back to that list of different words and i click on it these are all where it says revenger and it's the h1350 and so then that allows me to look at that specifically and this is the great truth right that jesus is our redeemer thinking of boaz we see him as the one who purchases who who redeems us uh, just like Boaz did it for Ruth, there was a closer redeem or a closer kinsman, but he said, "Alas, I cannot," and so Boaz steps in and he redeems Ruth. Well, then in the law, you also had this idea of the revenger, that if someone, uh, let's say, kills your brother, it was then your duty to go and revenge him. And that's when, you know, if it was an accident, you had to flee to a city of refuge and be safe. Well, here's this revenger, and he is the kinsman. He's the closest relative. So it's that close one who both has, who has both the opportunity to redeem and avenge, right? And so Jesus exactly. is our, Jesus is our redeemer but he's also our avenger that's what it says in romans 13 that vengeance is mine says the lord you don't have to take up for yourself mm -hmm. because jesus will do that for you right yes he's, uh, mm -hmm. yeah he's the one and so th this little tool again i would never have connected those words that kinsman redeemer and the revenger is rooted in the same word and so a little tool like this and a little curiosity snooping around 
really opens those doors, which allows for us to um, see a little bit more. Exactly. Yeah, th I think this is um, it's a fabulous way to to study the Bible. It's um, it, it, it is um, it, it, it awakens that curiosity in in the student to uh, evaluate, you know, play with words. Yeah, I'm, and I mean, I'm being I mean, I'm being careful with that play with words as like, OK, how, how is, you know, it's trying to take you in that um, perspective to when those words were written and what it means for us today and what it, and so I think that's a very interesting fact and not many of us are willing are uh, I guess willing to go ahead and go and go to the library and pick up that big vines or strongs um, you know and read uh, but I with this tool and our on our hands you know, tips of our hands so or in your on your computer i think this is a fabulous way to study the bible now previously christian we talked about really our first two episodes we talked about the basic bible study tools how would you say this complements those so if i've got questions or i make observations in the text how how would you if you're you're studying the scriptures, and mm -hmm. uh, what basically grabs your attention and makes you say, "Ooh, let me go look that up on Blue Letter Bible." I think one one way uh, one thing that we had mentioned about studying the Bible the Bible is, uh, for instance, look at repeated words, looking at how, you know, words, uh, the occurrence of, 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 of uh, a specific word or uh, words in the passage. And that can uh, help you understand why this word is, you know, the usage of that, that, word, of that word in that specific passage you're reading or in how it's used in other passages throughout scripture so that can help you put together um, uh, i guess put um, uh, have a good understanding of what you're reading and and also how you should apply it whether it's in your life or in as you read you continue to read that that book now what would you say um you, you use the app and have you found any major drawbacks with the app that you use? Absolutely not. And I'm, I'm actually fascinated at the ease of use and how is, it's uh, um, very user-friendly to use. And uh, it's actually astounding to, to find that this is a very is a free app or free uh, application, whether in your computer or on your phone. It's a uh, very, it's astounding. And one of the tools actually I was uh, checking with today, because normally I just use it for words. I realized that you can actually even uh, in the commentaries, you can find like a commentary that's written or recorded for that the passage you're reading. So I found, for instance, a commentary by J. Vernon McGee as I was looking at Exodus. There was a commentary that I could listen to, mm. so that's a very nifty, nifty tool. It's a, you know, one of those commentaries that you usually find on the radio sometime. Yeah, you know, uh, on the radio program. So that's a very nifty and very useful tool uh, for the student. Yeah, and it looks a little intimidating. I remember the first time I went on Blue Letter Bible, it's like you click something, it's like, whoa, it expands, or like all of a sudden it's all these Greek words here, there, and everywhere. And uh, I think what I would say, like you said, it's very user-friendly, and it is. When you go there and you start playing with it a little bit, just go to, okay, I'm studying this chapter, go to that chapter, click tools, move through it, uh, things link, very well um and so it does look a little overwhelming but you start playing with it a little bit and it really does become second nature mm -hmm. and go, sorry go ahead yeah I, excuse me i was just gonna say that 
you I you start with one tool. For instance, you look at okay, what is this word? What does it mean? You can just start using that, and then next time you use it, you can just upgrade and go further and say, okay, I want to see where this word is used or in, in not just the significance or, the, and then you can just go in the concordance and, you know, you, you, you kind of step up your game that way slowly. And then until you realize you, you this app is giving you a, a wide range of options to study your, your passage. Yeah, I wanted to show one more nifty little tool here. This is a cool little feature. So if I search a word, let's say, again, I'm going with redemption, but I go with the root English word, redeem, and I put an asterisk right here in my search. See how I put that little asterisk there? It will give me all the, uh, what word am I looking for? All oh, the variations. There you go. Mm -hmm. It gives me all the variations of that word redeem. So it gives me redeem, redeemed, redeemer, redeeming, redeems. And so sometimes if I just search one word, it, it will just give me that. So if I go in primary, it'll just give me redeem. But because I put the little asterisk, a new little tab comes up that says wild. <laughs> the wild card, yes. Yeah. yeah, and so it will give me all of these. So then instead of just getting that those 46 that I was originally going to get, I'll add those other things to my study. So that's helpful, again, because if I'm just thumbing through a Strong's um, or, you know, the old paper copy, it's it's not quite as user friendly because of how quickly mm -hmm. it searches. And again, like you said, if you have the app, it fits in your pocket. The old uh, hardback Strong's doesn't. That would be some pocket uh, for it to, to fit in. Yes, absolutely. The one way I usually use it, and uh, I hope that maybe when I'm I'm in it, I'm a I'm a in a church service that it doesn't seem like I'm distracted on my phone. Um, I usually have my uh, hard copy Bible and I'm reading or I'm taking notes and in my hard copy Bible, I usually have the phone next to it. So just pulling, carefully pulling, pulling those words that I'm trying to see where, okay, why is this word used like this? You know, pulling that into linear option where I can see the words and see, you know, go do, to those links that take me to the Strong's or Vine's dictionaries. or So it, that's how I usually use it uh, because on your phone or on your comp computer, you may not always have uh, the words and passage there and um, the word etymology or dictionary uh, or whatever you're trying to find. So having both uh, next to each other, I think that's a good fine way to to use it there's another feature I, for, I forgot to show it but you can if i pull up a verse like john three sixteen, i can then look at translations and it will show me all the translations that they have on blue letter bible just john three sixteen. so it'll be john three sixteen in king james and new king james nasb esv niv and so sometimes if there's a verse and you're reading it, it's a little confusing or something like that. You just click that and you'll get a good variety where you can look at all those different verses as well. So yes, another you can if, yes, you can even parallel them. So you can have, uh, for instance, my my on my phone app. I you can I don't know if you could be able to see this, but you can yes. have them parallel like this. Yeah. So you can just compare. Uh, I usually have the King James usually open and comparing it with a different version that I'm, trying, I'm reading. Yeah. Now, um, does it have French? I haven't checked. Okay. So that would be, yeah. I saw that it had Spanish, <laughs> some Spanish resources, but I just didn't know since you speak French, I didn't know if it had that. We'll have to explore that uh, later. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm ten. I'm betting that it might, it may have, must have French. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
I think that's good. You think that's good?